What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. We are the 11th of March and today we're having a look at a countdown which is very similar to what we've done yesterday with a timer but it's the other way around and we're also since you no know, it's very similar I've also threw in a couple of neat little tricks such as radial countdown which um, is really cool. It looks like a Breath of the Wild little circle thing. Let's have a look in the game right? So over here I have a trigger. If I jump on it we'll see my countdown starts. And that's a five second countdown. You can have it this way or you can have it in the text form as well, just like we had in a previous episode. Do also know that when I jump on this thing, um, when it when it's done, there's a way to have a callback to do something else. So what you could do is say, when my radial countdown is over here on the right hand side, when it's done, I have the on end and I can just say drag and drop my cube, which is the trigger. And let's just delete it. Let's do a game object set active to false. So now when I run the game, since I have my callback directly set in the inspector just like that, I can go in here and when we're done with the countdown, it should disappear. And yep, yeah, here it is. So that's what we're having a look at today, guys. Okay, so I have a scene set up already, just like last time. If you need this scene, you can find it on the website. It's the second link in the description down below. And let's get started. So the scene is composed of three buttons. One that will start a 5 second countdown, 65 second countdown, and then um, 1 hour countdown. Of course, I don't think we're going to be using this one for today, but we'll be using it for the text countdown. Then I have a text mesh pro object that will be our text countdown and also just a normal sprite from Unity actually, default sprite, um, that will be our radial countdown. So it's really important that my radial countdown is actually on image type fill, else this is not going to work. So as I mentioned, Put that on fill and we're going to be playing with this fill amount value. All right, so let's get started. I have a first script called text countdown and a second one called radial countdown. Now, um, if you've been around in the last episode, we're going to be reusing a lot of that code. So a lot of the code we had is going to be reused. In fact, let me just go ahead and paste this one in right here. This is from previous episode as well. Um, we're going to be, of course, <laughs> filling in those values as time come. Our text countdown is going to need a couple of fields at the top and here they are. They are the reference to the text we're going to be modifying in real time and also a character splitter. So if you want to have like one hour, minutes and then seconds, like hour, minute, seconds, what character are we going to put in between to split them? In my case, I chose the double dot. And then we're going to need a couple of logic field. Those ones do differ from um, the one we had yesterday. We have a little bit of variation in here. We need to know when the timer has started and we're going to be assigning last start to that value. So we're going to say as soon as, as the timer starts, we'll say last start is equal to time dot time and we'll go from there and you know, no history of the previous countdown. Um, we need to know how long the countdown is going to last. So is it a five second countdown, 10 seconds, one hour? We need to know if it's active so we can update it if it is and if it's not, we don't bother putting any CPU power on it. And finally, I like to add a callback once we're done with the countdown. So as soon as the countdown reaches zero or when it's completed, do we do something in the engine? Do we do a Unity event, they call it, and this is the type. Unity event, it is from Unity Engine dot events. You'll see what it is um, in the inspector. You can actually assign that manually. It's just like the on click uh, button. So it, it's really cool, actually. So we're going to be looking at that in a moment. Okay. Let's see, do we have to reuse any other code from previous episode? We do have the update, which looks just like this. And that's pretty much the update. If it's active, we update our text. Now, um, this one differs. And the last time, I'm not quite sure what we did is, uh, yeah, we were incrementing our timer every frame. Now, this time, what we have to do is we have to check, okay, when did we start? And when is this going to end? So we have the ending time. So that's right, right here. That's the ending time minus our current time so we know how long there is left to this countdown and then we just put it through the same kind of filtering we did for um, the normal timer and that gives us our timer that gives us all we need really all right so this is a countdown it's not a timer i keep i keep saying timer but it's not a timer it's a countdown so it has an end at one point so we're going to keep on looking okay so if the amount of time left is smaller or equal to zero well if it's now zero or, or below that, we're going to put it on false. We're no longer active. And then we're going to call our callback if we do have one. So make sure you include that, of course. 
Now that seems cool, but of course we need to start it, right? So we have to start that countdown somewhere and this is our new function down here. Public void start countdown. We give in the amount of time we need, so 6 seconds, 55 seconds and so on. We make sure to set the last start to right now. This is when the timer, actually the countdown actually starts. Then we put is active to true, put the amount of duration by the amount of seconds and we update our text. We don't technically have to update it. Well, it's better to update it because you gain one frame ahead, but it's going to be automatically updated on the next frame. And if you feel like it, you can also include a get time left at the end. So from, from other script, you'll be able to know how long there is left to this timer. And that's it. So we reused a lot of code from last episode, but that's really just it. We're going to go and test this one out right now. So I'm going to go under my text countdown. I have my script right here on top of my object. I'll have to assign my reference. So let's have a look here. I need a text countdown. So it's on the same object in this case. And we also add the end callback. We'll try it once without any, and then we'll try it again with a, um, an actual callback. So let me hook this one up. Um, text down, down, yep, that's it. This one is already hooked up, so basically I already have my text in there. So my text countdown is there. Start countdown for five seconds. And it's the same over here. So I'll go ahead, press on this, and here is our countdown. Works just like last episode, and it's just working. After zero, we're not gonna go in the minuses because if it's smaller than zero, then it just stops. So is active is no longer true. Now let's try something. Let's try adding a callback to this. So when I'm done with the countdown, let's um, we could we could change the text of the countdown itself. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click on the plus sign, then I'll drag and drop say the text mesh pro, and we'll change. Let's see, um, we'll change the text value. There it is. So string text, and we can change it to. Um, countdown, whoops, countdown completed. So technically, if I press on this, we wait five seconds, then the text is going to be changed to countdown completed. Just like that. And then we can start over again. And it's going to be consumed more than once. So that was our text countdown. Now for the radial countdown, let's grab all of that. So basically just grab the same exact script I'll go right in my new script, Radial Countdown, um, and let's have a look at what do we need to change. So at the top over here in the text section, instead of using text, well, we're going to be using an image. Now do note that if you're having an image, you need um, UnityEngine.UI at the top. So we have our image, we got rid of our character splitter, we got rid of our reference to our text mesh um, text. Those stay the same. Here instead of saying update text, we'll do update radial and we'll change it here as well we'll change it down there in the start countdown as well now all of this is pretty much useless to us and over here this is also useless in the update we no longer need the um, the time left we can get it down here as a public float but what we need here is a ratio how do we get a ratio well like this so the current time minus when it started that gives you how long we've been inside of this transition divided by the whole duration of that transition gives us a nice ratio now this is going to go from um, zero to one and that's not what we want if we want to do a countdown we want to start at one and then go down to zero so what i do here is i do one minus this value now we no longer have the amount of time left over here but instead we can use a ratio because when that one hits zero or goes be below that um, then we're gonna be over basically and what else do we need well of course we need to update that image so image dot fill amount is equal to ratio and just like that we have completed the transition from a text to a radial countdown now make sure do make sure that your image that you have has the proper type so image type filled in this case now I'm going to go on my um, buttons over here, see if they're connected. Yep, so my function are connected. I'm calling radial countdown dot start countdown. Actually, I'm calling both with, with both buttons or with the three buttons. So, oh, we forgot to set our references. So what image are we using? We're using the same one 
that we're on right now. I'm not going to be setting a call back. We know it works from the other script. And then hit play. And you'll see the actual countdown in both versions. You can have a very long one too if you want. Oh, and I didn't test the hours, but here they are. So that's one hour, that's one minute, and they all work. And that's pretty much it. That's how we did a radial countdown. That's how we did a text countdown. Quick reminder that if you go over to our website, the second link in the description down below, you'll be able to download all of that right here. We have the timer from last episode. We're also going to have the countdown from today's episode, including the radial countdown, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Stay beautiful. Cheers. All that jazz.